So basically what we're trying to do is we're creating a tool to prepare students from Duke and NC Central to go into schools. It could be pre-service teachers or it could be people who are planning to be social workers in schools. And so we're collecting a lot of data about community resources, the resources that the schools already have rather than what they're lacking. We're taking an asset-based approach, so we're looking once again at what the schools already have rather than a deficit-based approach, which is kind of what the schools are missing. We don't want to go in and you know, fix the schools. We want to go in and work with the resources that are already available. This project is supposed to um, benefit anybody who's going into the classroom, whether they're social workers, pre-service teachers, teachers that are active in the classroom right now, or just any visitors, so they can change the perspective of what students who are in Durham Public Schools are and kind of change how we view them and how we view these communities. So then we can go into the, the schools with a different mindset. In a nutshell, the project is about making a tool that will allow people that go into Durham Public Schools uh, to get an overview of what the schools are like. So including things like community assets and statistical information about the schools into one comprehensive web app. So students from Duke University and NCCU going into the school system can have information about the schools in order to know what to expect when entering into the school system. But we're also really interested in understanding like how this community has changed over the last 50 years, right? What did the, who did this community serve 50 years ago? Who does it serve now? Who's it gonna serve in 10 years based on gentrification and changing neighborhoods? Um, we're really interested in tapping into like, again, the resources and the assets that exist in communities that might be overlooked um, from public parks to public gardens to um, bus routes to all sorts of things that I don't have the expertise to 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 dig into but our students and our and our project manager are, are starting that process right now but we're really interested in finding out the powers and the strengths within public school communities um, and the things that might not be highlighted we do um, want to start going out in the community because we feel that it's important if we're going to advocate or work for um, people in the community we should also um, include them into our project, so that's something that we are looking for is to um, go into these community schools or go into our 10 data set schools and get them involved on in our project as well. It, has, it sounds really obvious to say we have to work with a community for things to work. We have to ground uh, or work in what exists and what the concrete opportunities, what the concrete opportunities of a community are. Uh, and that is very obvious and sadly it hasn't always been done that way. It's just cool to be able to see everything that Durham already has and the fact that Durham already is a, a super strong community and that's, that's something that I wasn't as familiar with coming into Duke, but I'm very glad that they have it now. The goal of the app is to provide a comprehensive resource for students entering into the public school system from different universities. So things such as pre-service teachers or volunteers in the school communities. And so what we're trying to do is take resources that exist in a bunch of disparate places. So on websites such as the North Carolina Report Card or Durham Compass, there's information about the schools. And what we're hoping to do is put it all together into one comprehensive resource that's really easy for people to go onto the site and think, OK, I'm entering into the CC Spalding School. Let's see the enrollment numbers or demographics of that school. The biggest challenge for me, and I'm assuming for members of my team as well, would be that our final project is in our shiny dashboard, which is something that none of us had experience with in the past. So we kind of had to start from square one and learn all about the R shiny package, learn what it is, how to work on it, and then begin coding once we had that pre pre preliminary knowledge. So it was definitely a learning curve about figuring out what to do, how to do it, encountering problems and figuring out how to solve them. So going from nothing to try to create a final project. Although I think it was pretty cool to see how it's been coming together, even though we started out with nothing and now it's coming into a really good final product. We're hoping that this work will continue on after us. We've left our app open and editable for anyone in the future to continue working on and two members of our team are continuing with the Bass Connections team in the fall, which will be great to help continue the progress that the app is making.